Hi guys and welcome to Unity 5. Today we're going to look at projectiles in 12 minutes. We'll be covering rigid bodies and uh, the idea of instantiating objects. So let's get started. So first we have a very simple project with a third person controller as well as a box that is used as the ground. As you can see the target has been set for a third person controller so that the camera can follow this third person controller. So again if I play the scene you should see that I can move around and the camera will follow me. So again I've used one of those built-in cameras called multi-purpose camera rig. So so far so good we can uh, move the character. Then what we will do is create a launcher. This launcher will be made of a cube. So we will rename this cube and call it launcher and then resize it and move it to a different location in the scene using the move tool. Again you can use your um, shortcut Q, W, E, R or T. Once this is done we just remove the collider so that anything that we launch from this launcher doesn't collide with it. Next we create a sphere. The sphere will be like a template for all the projectile that we'll be throwing from the launcher. So again we just create a sphere and resize it on the X, Y and Z axis about 0.2. Once this is done, we create a prefab with this particular object, which means that this prefab is a bit like a template that will be based on the ball that we have created. So again, the only thing we need to do, even before we create the template, is to add a rigid body to this ball, which means that it will actually be subject to the laws of gravity and physics in general. So again, take the ball and drag and drop it onto the projectile prefab. Once the prefab has been created, it's time to create a script that will control the launcher. So again, we rename the script launch projectile. And once this is done, there are a few things we need to do in the actual script. So first, we will create a placeholder or public variable that is called projectile. Again, I'll call it placeholder because this variable then will be visible in the inspector which means that we'll be able to drag and drop something onto it. And this thing will be the prefab we've created earlier on. Then, in the update function, I will test for the key to be pressed. So in our case, we're going to look at the key called P. So again, we use the syntax input.getKeyDown. and then key code. So again here, whenever the P key has been pressed, we will instantiate a brand new object. So again, we're going to create an object based on the template, which is the prefab. So again, the prefab here is called projectile, which is uh, the variable we have created at the very start of this script. Then we look at the position of this uh, new object. It's going to be the same position as the launcher. And then the quaternion.identify says that basically we just not, we don't rotate this object around. So again, identity means that there is no rotation at all. Then we just take this uh, script and drag it and drop it onto the launcher, which means that it will be effective and launched whenever the game is starting. The last thing we need to do again is to drag and drop the prefab onto the actual placeholder that we have created in the script. If you remember, projectile, the variable projectile was public, which means that it is accessible in the inspector window. Once this is done, we play the scene and press the P key. It's P uppercase. As I do so, you will see a few of these balls instantiated. You can see that they actually follow the laws of physics, they're actually subject to gravity. And again, um, the different copies appeared in the inspector. So at this stage, we would like to do something else. We would like to add some kind of force to this um, objects. But before that, we will actually make sure that we destroy them after a few seconds. So again, what we do is we use the command destroy to destroy this object after three seconds. Again, if I play my scene, you should see that as I press the P key, these objects are created. They will actually pile up on top of each other. 
and then be destroyed automatically after three seconds. One, two, three, and they start to disappear. Okay, you can see that in the hierarchy window as well. So again, I'm going to create more, and then they disappear automatically. So again, this is just to make sure that the scene is not overcrowded with objects. After this, we can then start to think about adding a force to this object that has been created. So again, to do so, we will actually add what is called add force. The idea of add force is to add a force to an object which has a rigid body. And this object will be subject to a force in a particular direction. And in our example, we will use the forward direction multiplied by a specific scaling factor. Okay, the higher the, sp the scaling factor, the, the greater the force. The only issue here is that the the ball is actually s uh, thrown in, in a direction that is not actually the player. So what we will do is make sure that our launcher is actually facing the player. So again, we use transform.lookAt and then specify the transform of a specific target. Now, the target variable has not been created yet, but again, if the target is the player, then we'll be looking at its transform, so at its position. So again, we're going to create a public variable called target. Again, it will appear in the inspector window. You can see it uh, in a few seconds here. As I refresh it, so again, it hasn't been refreshed yet. If I click again on it, you should see that one of its parameters should be now a target. Okay, and the target should be a game object. So at this stage, uh, we're going to drag and drop the third person controller onto the target. That's perfect. And then, once this is done, we just have to, again, check the, check the game. And we see that if you press the P key, the actual, the actual projectile is sent in the direction of the third person controller. Again, it's working perfectly. The only issue here, I suppose, is that the actual uh, projectile has not enough force. So the force applied to the projectile is not great enough. So again, we're going to change that to a thousand. And what we will also do is create what is called a timer. So again, what we will do is make sure that the actual uh, projectile is fired repeatedly. Now as it is, it's going to be sent almost every frame and we will modify it later, but this is just to let you know how it can be done first. So again, uh, we set back the timer to zero. And we check that the timer is more than 1.5 or equal to 1.5, which is always the case. So basically because it's always true, this um, projectile will be thrown or launched every frame, so repeatedly. So again, if we play the scene, we should see that the launcher is launching a projectile in the direction of the player, but constantly. Okay, you can see in the hierarchy window, the projectiles have been created, but it's done constantly. So again, what we need to do really is to make sure that those projectiles are sent or launched just every second or every two seconds. So what we will do is use what is called time.delta time. The idea is that the timer will be increased every second. That's what it means. Okay, time dot delta time is a time number of seconds elapsed since the last frame. Okay, so again, what we will do is we add one to this timer uh, every second. And now we should see that basically after 1.5 seconds, uh, the, the actual projectile will be launched. So if I play the scene again, you should see that the frequency little bit is a little bit lower right now. Okay, so again, it's launched once launched again. So again, it gives the player a little bit more time. So now we have seen that the scene is working pretty well. So what we need to do is now is there are a few more things we could do. We could add an explosion, for instance, whenever uh, the there is an impact between the projectile and another object. But even before that, what I'm doing is just duplicating the launchers, 
just to show you that after creating one you can duplicate it, duplicate it very easily and make the game a little bit more difficult so again if i play this in right now you can see that all the all three launchers are framed perfect times at my play and again it's just a matter of duplicating the very first launcher so we can see that it is working perfectly and the last thing I need to do now is really to look at explosion. So again, just to jazz up, jazz up a little bit my game. So what we will do is create uh, a brand new script. And this script would be called collision. And um, let me check. Collision from project time. So this script will be used to detect collision between the projectile and other objects. and Part of the thing that it will do, it will try to instantiate an explosion wherever the uh, collision has occurred. So we're going to create a public variable called explosion. The type is game object, which means again that whenever the script has been added to an object, uh, this variable will be accessible from the inspector window. Then we create a function called on collision enter. So this function, which is a built-in function, is called whenever a collision is detected between the object to which this script is linked and a different object. So again, this whenever the collision is detected, this uh, function will return a um, variable called collision. And this variable will actually include elements or information about the collision, including the actual game object involved in the collision. So for this purpose, what we will do just is to instantiate uh, an object called explosion. And again, we'll instantiate this object at the same position as the object, which is a projectile. And again, we're going to use quaternion.identity to say that we don't need to rotate this new object. Okay. So again, this is done. We're just going to instantiate this object. Again, it's called explosion. So it's going to be based on the variable explosion, which is a public variable. So again, because this is a place order, we need to add something to this field. So again, what we will do is create a brand new um, prefab. Actually, we're going to use a prefab called explosion after dragging and dropping this script to the ball and then dragging this ball again to the projectile. So again, what we've done is we've updated the actual prefab. Okay, so you're gonna update the object in the hierarchy, then update the prefab. Then we go into the particle system and look at an explosion here. So again, we're back to the ball. We looked at the um, placeholder called explosion and drag and drop this prefab on this explosion, which means that whenever an explosion or sorry, whenever a collision occurs, an explosion or the prefab explosion will be instantiated. So again, we'll update uh, the prefab there because we have changed um, the actual placeholder explosion within the script. And once this is done, we can see that whenever the, ex the actual uh, ball collide with the ground or any other object, an explosion is created. So again, this is working perfectly. So that's it guys. With this kind of game, you could do a few things. You could create a tank game, a basketball shootout game, angry board type of game, or any other games involving collisions and rigid body. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And again, if you need to know more about games and Unity, please check the website learntocreategames.com. Thank you. Bye.
That's it guys, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if you want to know more about Unity, please check the website www.learntocreategames.com. See you, bye!